Welcome to Microsoft Access Expert Level 11, brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. Today's class is all about aggregate queries, also known as summary queries or grouping queries or totals queries. They have lots of different names. We'll begin by learning what aggregate queries are and when you want to use them. We'll build some simple aggregate queries, such as show me all of the sales totals broken down by state. We'll learn about all the different aggregate query functions, like sum, average, count, max, min, and so on. We'll learn about complex query criteria for our aggregate queries. We'll perform some more advanced calculations, such as show me the credit limit of all of my customers broken down by state, but only for customers after 1999, and things like that. We'll learn about the where field condition in our aggregate queries. Then we'll go through a few more examples of aggregate queries, such as show me sales totals by month, show me the lowest product cost, since each of my products can be purchased from multiple vendors, and each vendor sells multiple products. Remember, we built that many-to-many -many relationship. I want to generate a list of all of my products and show me the lowest cost for each product and which vendor I can buy it from. Next is the last customer contact report. Show me a list of all of my customers, the date of the last contact with them, and what that contact was. And if there are no contacts, show that. This is great for seeing which customers you haven't talked to in a while, and also for a brief synopsis of where each customer is at. Next, we'll build an employee work log where we can track employee time. Pick the employee, put in their start date and end date, or start time and end time for when they check in. And then using an aggregate query, we can generate a report showing all of their hours worked between two dates. So if you want to get their hours worked for the week, you just type in those dates, hit Run Query, and there's your report. And finally, we'll go over a bunch of little stuff. We'll cover the expression option in aggregate queries. We'll use the dsum function, which is an aggregate function, to show the orders for the last 30 days right on the main menu. And we'll make a little refresh button so we can click on it and recalculate that value. And of course, there's lots of little tips and tricks that I'll throw in throughout the lesson. This course follows Microsoft Access Expert Level 10. I recommend you watch Level 10 before watching today's class. Level 10 covers the DLOOKUP function, which is very similar to the DSUM function we're going to work with later today. It'd be helpful if you understand DLOOKUP first before learning about DSUM. We cover generating quotes and invoices and using calculated table fields in Level 10. You can find more information on Level 10 on my website at accesslearningzone.com. Today's class is recorded using Microsoft Access 2013. Everything in today's class should work just fine with 2007 and 2010. If you're using Access 2003, go to my website and get a copy of Access 221 for my older series. That class is roughly equivalent to this one, covering aggregate queries and such. My courses are broken up into four groups, Beginner, Expert, Advanced, and Developer. The beginner lessons are designed to give you a basic overview of the simple features of Access. The Expert series, the one you're in now, is designed for more experienced users who are already comfortable with Access. The advanced lessons cover working with macros, automation, and many more advanced features. And the developer lessons get into programming with Visual Basic for Microsoft Access. Each of the series are broken down into different numbered levels, starting with level 1. The beginner series, for example, had levels 1 through 9. In addition to my normal access classes, I also have seminars designed to teach specific topics. Some of my seminars include building web-based databases, creating forms and reports that look like calendars, securing your database, working with images and attachments, writing work orders, tracking accounts payable, learning the SQL programming language, and lots more. You can find complete details on all of these seminars and more on my website at accesslearningzone.com. If you have questions about the topics covered in today's lessons, please feel free to post them in my student forums. 
if you're watching this course, using my custom video player software or the online theater on my website, you should see the student forum for each lesson appear in a small window next to the class videos, as long as you have an active internet connection. Here, you will see all of the questions that other students have asked, as well as my responses to them and comments that other students may have made. I encourage you to read through these questions and answers as you start each lesson, and feel free to post your own questions and comments as well. If you're not watching the lessons online, you can still visit the student forums later by visiting accesslearningzone.com slash forums. To get the most out of this course, I recommend that you sit back, relax, and watch each lesson completely through once without trying to do anything on your computer. Then, replay the lesson from the beginning and follow along with my examples. Actually create the same database that I make in the video step by step. Don't try to apply what you're learning right now to other projects until you've mastered the sample database from this class. If you get stuck or don't understand something, watch the video again from the beginning or tell me what's wrong in the student forum. Most importantly, keep an open mind. Access might seem intimidating at first, but once you get the hang of it, you'll see that it's real easy to use. Now let's take a closer look at exactly what's covered in today's class. In Lesson 1, we're going to learn what aggregate queries are, why they're useful, and we'll build a few simple queries so you can see how they work. In Lesson 2, we're going to look at building an aggregate query that has complex query criteria. In Lesson 3, we'll make an aggregate query to show you sales by month. We'll show you the sum, average, and count of all of your sales grouped by month. In Lesson 4, we'll use a minimum aggregate query, along with some DLOOKUP statements, to generate a list of products and the lowest possible price you can get it from each vendor. Since each of our products can be purchased from multiple vendors, we might want to know who are the cheapest vendors for each product. To do that, we can use a minimum aggregate query. In Lesson 5, we'll use an aggregate query to generate a list of all of our customers when the last contact date was for each customer and what was discussed. In Lesson 6, we'll build an employee work log. We'll create a simple time clock table with a time in and a time out each day. We'll calculate the hours worked and we'll make a lookup form so you can type in a start date and an end date, pick an employee from a combo box, and then using an aggregate query, see the sum of hours worked between those two dates. In Lesson 7, we're going to talk about a couple of miscellaneous items. We're going to learn about the expression option in your aggregate queries. We're going to make a box on your main menu showing the orders in the last 30 days using the dsum function. We'll make a button to refresh that value manually. And I will give you your homework assignment for the next class.